Hi everyone, I am Rebecca from Chemnitz and today we are going to leave no dye behind. And by dye, I mean candy. Here we have the leftover of four boxes of Sweet Tarts candy that we also sprayed with a little bit of color mist spray on a sock blank. And we are going to use this to dye two skeins of sock yarn. The candy contains these lake food colorings, which I believe are maybe a little less soluble in water. I'm not sure, but I am very curious to see what kind of pigmentation we will get on our yarn. The bare yarn that we are using today are two skeins of the 8020 Superwash Merino Nylon Blend that Dyer Supplier sent me to try out. Dyer Supplier is the um, Bear Yarn Company that is associated with Knit Crate, and I am a Knit Crate affiliate, um, but I don't have a Dyer Supplier affiliate code or anything like that, but I will include a link to the product in the video description, and I'm very grateful that Dyer Supplier sent me this yarn for free so I could play with it. The water that we have here is the same as the pre-soak that we used for the sock blanks that we dyed earlier. Um, it was just tap water with a big healthy splash of vinegar. And we're not in a low immersion setup. We've got some really um, good depth in here. And as we're heating up, we're gonna start adding our candy. Even though we are using all food safe dyes today, I am using my dedicated dye equipment and so nothing you see today is used for food. And for ease, I have added these reusable nylon zip ties to the yarn so that way I can flip it through. Now, the candy that we have here today is the leftovers from almost four entire boxes of the candy. I'm not gonna add all of it here into the pan right now, but I am gonna do like a really nice smattering because I do plan to flip the yarn and add some more to the other side in a little while. Um, but hopefully these will dissolve nicely and give us some fun pigments. The candy themselves starts with um, five colors, pink, uh, yellow, green, blue, and purple, um, but then I used pink, purple, and blue color mist sprays. And so that's sort of what you can see on the outside layer of some of this. Um, as for the yarn base, I've dyed this one once before um, and I was really happy with it. What I'm not sure about is if these colors will be as pigmented as when we've tried this with Candy Hearts. Um, all that remains to be seen but I think that this is a good amount of candy to start off with. I still have plenty for the other side. And actually I have some even more that I didn't even use um, on our blanks. But um, I'm going to come back in about 20 minutes, maybe sooner if we see something notable. But oh, that one looks like it's dissolved and hello pigment. Um, that is some nice purple pigment. So it might not even take, ooh, ooh. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hands off and come zoom in. Well, the candy was not dry because I'd been sitting on a blank and stuff for a while, but that one has completely dissolved. This purple one there has completely dissolved. So yeah, we definitely may not even need anywhere close to 20 minutes. And we are definitely, definitely getting some great patches of pigment on our yarn. It has been about 20 minutes and hello pigmentation. There's still some, I guess like some particles around, but like the color seems to be in the yarn with some, maybe a few exceptions. And this is not like pastel. These are some serious, serious pops of color. Um, ooh, check out the other side though. Um, so while we had some really serious pops of color, we over here, 
Like there's been great color penetration and this is beautiful. Like I'm not seeing a bunch of white patches or anything like that. That is pretty. I wonder, the place where we're most likely to have white patches is sort of where these ties are located. So I'm trying to shift the tie down a little bit. There we go. So we can open that up. But now I'm going to add the rest of the candy to this side. Oh. Why couldn't this pigment easily go on my blanks? I think I made like a real big mistake um, when I was doing the blank and I squeezed out too much water. I think if I had left it like let it be a little more wet, we could have really taken advantage of some of this fabulous pigmentation. So maybe I need to give it another shot. I would say this smells so good. And whenever I die with candy, you guys are always like, how, how do you avoid eating it? And I'll tell you, it's hard on this kind. This is the kind of candy that I like. Um, I'm not a jelly bean kind of person, but I do enjoy like fruity stuff like sweet tarts. Um, and so yeah, I'm just going on and adding the rest of this. I'm really glad that we had good like color penetration. Um, we might end up with some browns because, you know, just the way things are layered, but I am not going to worry about, you know, white patches or anything like that. And I'm going to go ahead and let this go for, I guess, another 20 minutes. Most of the color has absorbed. There is some candy that has not, but I am going to sort of lift and flip. Oof, this is nice. This is nice. I do want all of the candy to dissolve. Um, so yeah, just sort of mixing it in. But this is really, really pretty. Um, all right, I am going to turn off the heat and let this cool down in here. The rest of the color should absorb, um, but I'm going to let it cool until I can comfortably handle it. And then, and then we'll go and start washing it in warm water to try to get all the candy back out. Let's start washing our candy rainbow yarn. When I'm done yarn with candy, I try to do all of the rinsing in warm water. Um, because you can see there's just a lot of stuff that is dissolved that we want to make sure stays dissolved and then can get out. You can see just how translucent um, that water is and that's just because we are filled with sugar and who knows what else. Um, yeah, sugars and natural flavors might contain egg. <laughs> All right, anyway, um, lots of different sugars in here. And but the good thing is, all of this fabulous color is in the yarn. It's not feeling super bright, per se. I mean, there's a brightness in here, but the rainbow almost feels a little bit jewel toned. Um, versus sort of more neon. Um, I will be doing soap in multiple rinses. Um, if you don't wash it enough, the yarn might end up feeling a little bit stiff after. But so far, so good. Um, and so yeah, I'm gonna keep washing it, and then I'll put it through the spin dryer, hanging it up to dry, and we'll come back for some conclusions. I have to say that I love how the Dyer Supplier yarn plumps back up through the dyeing process. The base of this yarn isn't really the typical bare yarn off-white color anymore. I would say that we've got some pastel greens and yellows on that backdrop. And then with these, this sort of muted rainbow throughout, likely because of the way some of the colors blended, but we've got, you know, I see the all of the colors really, the yellows, the green, purple, blue, and red. And this is, it's not a bright rainbow. 
It's a little bit more of like a hazy or cloudy one. But it's just so fun that even in some areas where there was a lot of candy together, there wasn't a ton of blending of the colors. You can still see them distinctly. Now, is there some maybe more mustard yellow in there? Uh, sure, there's definitely some quote mud that happened, but I think that that enhances this colorway as a whole. And I'm honestly thrilled. Candy is often not a lot more, at least from a dyer's perspective, than food coloring packaged up in a solid with some other ingredients that we don't care about, you know, like sugar and flavor and whatnot. But it can be a lot of fun to play with candy and yarn. And on this, I don't feel any sticky or thick residue left over. It washed completely out. I probably don't say this often enough in my videos anymore, but if you want to dye yarn with food coloring, you need to be starting with a wool-based yarn. This yarn is 80% superwash merino, 20% nylon. You can even dye something as low as 20% wool, 80% acrylic with food coloring, but you'll get something that is a lot more pastel overall because the acrylic, or if you have a cotton blend, the cotton fibers won't absorb the food coloring the same way the wool does. So you'll get much more vibrant colors, the more wool content, or silk, or alpaca, or something else that is protein-based that you have in your yarn. Could we create something similar without candy? Very much likely. Uh, a single drop of food coloring is a lot more pigment than there is in one little piece of candy. However, you could dilute food coloring and use some dilute drops, low immersion, and maybe get something that feels very similar. But there is just something fun about watching the candy dissolve and then creating some really fun yarn out of it. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and if you enjoyed this video, subscribe, like, turn on notifications. Make sure that you never miss a video. And also, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know, would you be willing to try this technique? If you would like to learn more about any of the, the yarn or the materials that I used for the dyeing of this yarn, you can find affiliate links in the video description. And I, once again, I'd like to thank Dyer Supplier for giving me this yarn for free so that way I could test it out. Finally, if you love the yarn that I dye, head over to the Chemnitz Creations Etsy shop. It is filled with yarn that has been featured in past and upcoming YouTube videos. And while this particular yarn might not be in the shop anymore, there's so much beautiful yarn in there that you really want to go check it out. Thank you so much for watching.